Hello everyone, this is the NCR shelter management update on the applications and changes we've made as a result of user feedback and the NCR tabletop exercise. Again, when you go to the homepage of the shelter management tool, there's a box in the top which will show you the major changes to what's new. Of course, there's a lot of minor changes you'll find throughout and we welcome you to go through and check out all the different changes and applications we've been using. The technical user guide has also been updated. Uh, we recommend you go in there for both users and GIS IT personnel, and you can see the metadata behind a lot of the fields that we've been working on. If you have any changes to points of contact or additional information you'd like to see on this page, please let us know. We can add things such as the I-70 sheltering plan for the upcoming winter season or any other documents you'd like to see on this page. We'll also be adding a couple more training videos. This update, the main shelter training video that's on there, and then a power user training video, which will show you some cool tips and tricks for things like custom filter expressions and attribute tables. I just want to highlight some of the major changes we've made. Uh, again, when you come to the Edit Shelters tab, you'll immediately be shown the About information. Uh, nothing's really changed on all the widgets. We've just made a bunch of changes to the actual uh, Smart Editor function. So. As you can see, we've added a couple more options in here. Uh, we've added a spontaneous or other jurisdictional shelter, and we've also added supply caches. Your spontaneous shelters will show up as green when you open them, just like any other shelter, but they will be ringed by a purple or pink halo. Uh, this is important to differentiate them from authoritative and official shelters that are open, but it gives you the opportunity to open up shelters that are at a gas station or a Walmart that are still sheltering citizens but aren't necessarily staffed with government personnel or resources. We've also added supply caches. Um, gives you the opportunity to put both loose and drivable supplies on the map and then you could do some analysis based on kind of drive time and what actual resource you would like. Uh, I would first like to go to the actual smart editor fields Based on a lot of feedback, we've reordered a lot of these fields, so most of the active incident data is right up top, minus the shelter name. Obviously, this is what you're going to be changing during an incident, and all the base data, or B, should be filled out beforehand, understanding that you may not fill it all out, or that may change as well. Um, we have the same statuses on here, but we have updated the facility purpose, again, from user feedback. Uh, we think these four... Uh, evacuation center, warming center, short and long-term shelter captures the majority of uses for the NCR. Uh, if not, you could use other. Uh, if this is a huge issue and you have a different identifier, please let us know. But we did some research based on both the NCR sheltering and nationwide, the different terminologies out there, and we think this captures what it is. Of course, you could always change the facility purpose as you go on. I would also like to point out that we have changed a couple items in the facility type. Uh, during the exercise, there was a need to identify hotels and motels as a shelter. We understand that a hotel and motel can be a shelter just like a rec center or a government facility, uh, but we've added that down here in facility type so you could identify that as one of the locations. As far as the supply caches, uh, we've added a couple fields in here that we think captures what you would need for a supply cache. Uh, outside of just the address or the owner, uh, we have funding type, so both grant funded and agency funding, understanding that the NCR has funded some specific resources that can be used for sheltering. Uh, the type of cache is important. Is it in a closet of loose supplies or is it actually a trailer? And is that trail or something that needs to be hooked up, or is it something that's all included in the vehicle as well, like a Class B? Uh, if it's a trailer, then you could also put what sort of trailer hitch you might need to pick it up. Uh, this is all just to help folks know what they're really getting into, so they don't show up to pick up a shelter cache and realize they can't actually get it. Uh, consumable items is important, so folks know if they need to reimburse the agency. If uh, your agency decides to throw away a blanket after each use, that's nice to know. And then you could add some comments in here and when you did the last inventory. But most importantly, we give you the opportunity to add a file. So go ahead and add the attachment or the spreadsheet that you have. This can be both an Excel file that shows the itemized list of resources, but you can also take a picture of it to show where it is in the parking lot or what it actually looks like or what the hitch may look like. Obviously, when you get to the dashboard now, 
Uh, this also shows you the updated supply caches and the preparedness indicators. We have a tab right here, which shows you the total supply caches. Uh, with that, just like shelters, you have a filter option. So up in the top right, where you have your filter choices, you could show all supply caches. So right now we have two. We have one identified as loose supplies, so that one remains. We have one identified as a drivable trailer, that remains. And again, you could show all. Uh, I think that's important for you all to have as you identify which cache you want to try to tap into uh, if you again want to send a vehicle just to pick up loose supplies or you want to drive it. Another enhancement to this page has been the ability to select multiple counties. We understand that some jurisdictions are in multiple counties, so you could go ahead and you could select multiple counties from the list and it will populate them. Um, of course, you just click back off of them if you want to see all of the shelters. On the public map, the major update that we've made has been to include some custom filters. So we understand that folks uh, identify shelters as evacuation centers, warming centers, or actual shelters. Uh, we want the public to be able to search by that feature. So right now, I think we've identified this one at Fox Ridge Farms as a warming center. So if you go ahead and click an evacuation center, that's going to disappear disregard this artifact out here. But if you select a warming center, that's going to remain. Same if you select a short-term shelter, that won't. Uh, this is just another way to inform the public of what you're actually providing. Uh, if they're just trying to get out of a storm to stay warm, that's nice. But if their expectation that you come to this public map and everything on here is a overnight shelter, uh, we want to make sure we convey that's not the point. So again, we highly recommend everyone click through all of the applications as we move towards the production and go live of this application. Uh, feel free to reach out to NAPSIG if you have any other recommendations or questions. Thank you very much.